Hello, my name is Eric Michael. I'm a pre-sales systems engineer with Symantec. Today I'm going to talk to you about Symantec's approach towards protecting a virtual environment with endpoint protection. So what we're looking at here, we're looking at an endpoint protection manager. And to get you into the virtual dis uh, machine discussion here, I kind of need to build a little framework for us. And we're going to do that here by looking at uh, uh, virus and spiral protection policy and utilizing this as the basis for our discussion. Uh, the first thing I'm going to point out here is our download protection. This is our Insight technology. We see Insight here up at the top. This is Symantec's reputation-based technology where we are tracking code based off hash values on a global basis. This allows us to detect new and emerging code and is very useful technology at blocking stuff that uh, has never been before seen. Statistically, 75% of malware infects less than 50 machines, and this is a great technology to go after it. But what I want to get through your mind here as we start out is this concept of these hash values and this tracking of code by semantic, because that's the foundation that we're going to build on here as we talk about our virtual machines. The next piece here is our sonar. This is our behavior monitoring technology. This closes the gap between when new malware is released and when there's a traditional signature-based detection available for it. It essentially picks up malware based upon its suspicious behavior on the endpoint rather than a signature-based approach. All right. So now uh, into talking a little bit about virtual machines, the first stop here we have is this enable insight for semantic trusted. This actually applies to both physical and virtual machines. What this is, is when major vendors release new code, so that's Microsoft, Adobe, Semantic, major brands, when we release new code, we get a sample of that code directly from the vendor. We'll take that, we will create the hash value for it, and we will mark it in our database as what we call Semantic Trusted. Now, when we see that same executable on your system, we can skip it and not scan it. The hash value matches, we know that is Excel.exe as released by Microsoft, it's never been modified or changed, we don't need to spend any time or effort scanning that file. So this one checkbox across the board on all machines, physical and virtual, eliminates around 70% of the files on a typical system from being scanned. And this check should be on by default, uh, but it, it would be, uh, it's always good to go and double check that on your system. So now into the specific virtualization functionality. And before I get too deep into the technical weeds here, let me make a, a statement about Symantec's approach towards virtual environments. Symantec uh, recognizes that we cannot compromise our security in a virtual arena. The reason why we virtualize is to get better leverage out of our power, our hardware, and our cooling costs. When we move that infrastructure from physical to virtual, we expect it to provide for us the same services it provided when it was a physical infrastructure. Therefore, it has the same security concerns and therefore needs the same security, not less security. So Symantec has looked for ways to minimize the impact on a virtual environment without minimizing or compromising our security. So the virtual image exception here is part of that. What this is, is when I build a new virtual machine. Now, I may be going to create clones of this and deploy this out as a virtual desktop or a base image for servers or whatever I'm doing, or it may just be a single virtual machine I'm creating and I'm about to put in a live production environment today. I've created that virtual machine. I have run only known trusted good softwares on it. I've fully patched it. I've scanned it. I know every mouse click and key press that has happened to it, and I trust all the behaviors of that machine and what's going on. Okay. So what we will do is we'll run the virtual image exception tool. VIE tool.exe is part of the tools you get when you when uh, you download endpoint protections under the uh, slash tools slash virtualization folder. That will go and mark all the files in that image as being clean as of this date. Now, in the future, when I put that machine into production or I deploy clones of that machine, those files that are in that base image will never be infected by any future malware without being modified. So since they're clean against all known threats today, and a future threat would need to change the file, if that file never changes, never scan it again. So the virtual image exception is excluding the contents 
of the base image from being scanned. The next one here, our shared insight cache. Here's that insight coming back at us for, for a third time here, that reputation, that concept of, of checking uh, and, and creating these hash values. The shared insight cache is single instance or deduplicated scanning of our virtual environment. So what happens is a virtual machine scans a file, scans myapplication.exe. It reports the hash value of that file to the shared inside cache running somewhere in our data center. A second virtual machine comes along and says, I also have myapplication.exe. It's got, it's got the same hash value. Okay. The shared inside cache will say, some other virtual machine has already scanned that file and it'll go ahead and skip it and not rescan it. It's got the same hash value, so it knows the same file. It's got the same definition. So we will not waste CPU, memory, and disk I.O. to scan the same files over and over and over again. Okay. Now, the shared inside cache, as you can see by these radio buttons, works at two different levels. The first is utilizing the network. Okay? So everything I have talked to up to this point, okay, including the network-based shared inside cache, is hypervisor agnostic. It works with anybody's hypervisor. All right. Um, or we can utilize the vShield API and do this deduplication on a per host basis. The advantages and disadvantages of each one, utilizing the network does rely on a high speed, low latency network on the back end, which I should have when I'm talking about the racks within my data center. And it provides a much larger deduplication pool because we're deduplicating across the entire data center, uh, not just a particular host. If I look at the vShield integration, it runs very, very fast because it is running across vShield just on that host, but my deduplication pool is smaller. I'm only deduplicating across that host, not across the entire data center. In semantics performance testing, we were unable to determine a statistical advantage of one of these over the other. Most customers will deploy this via the network because they have one thing to set up. They take a Windows server of some flavor, they install the MSI to it, reboot once, put their settings in here, and they're deduplicating against all their virtual machines. Utilizing this via vShield involves editing an XML document, putting in your uh, credentials as well as the IP addresses of your ESX server and so forth, running that against a JAR file that will push out the security virtual appliance, you then re-edit the XML document for the next uh, virtual machine host and rerun it again. Uh, it's just simpler to push this out once per data center versus once per host. All right. So to sum all this up, let me tie all this together here. If it is in the base image, the virtual image exception, we don't scan it. So now we only scan what's added into that. If what we add in is a mainstream application, the semantic trusted over here, we don't scan it. So now we're down to scanning files that are added to the base image that are not mainstream applications. And of those, the shared inside cache, we deduplicate that scan to prevent wasting CPU and memory to, to scan the same files over and over and over again. Net impact here is a 90% reduction in disk I.O. with a 0% reduction in security. We have not compromised and gone to an antivirus only host-level approach towards protecting those virtual machines. Yes, we have an agent that resides in the virtual machine. That is the only way we can provide the full and equivalent protection to the physical environment that's replaced. The API with vShield does not give us the visibility we need to be able to perform the insight, the reputation-based checking, or the sonar, the behavior monitoring. They cannot be done. They do not give us, the API does not give us the visibility we need. Rather than compromise, rather than give you the illusion that a host level or an agentless antivirus is the equivalent of an agented protection that can monitor the activities of that virtual machine, rather than give you that illusion, Semantic looked for ways to minimize the impact without minimizing, without compromise to the security that you've come to expect from Semantic. So there you go. That's the discussion around uh, virtual environments here and how Semantic protects them with endpoint protection. Thanks for your time and have a great day.